Okay, let's talk about Laplace transform. Um, like we talked about like a couple of techniques like in chapter two and three, but like, you know, as you remember, like those techniques are really depend on the situation. Well, the Laplace transform is much wider use, but still like, you know, there are lots of restrictions, but like, you know, this Laplace transform is much more general than like the techniques before, okay? So I think like this isn't like most interesting part, most, is, most interesting part in this course. And we're gonna talk about Laplace transform, okay? So first of all, let's try to give you the um, like basic idea about the Laplace transform. Basically your function f of t is in this world, okay? But by the Laplace transform, you're gonna transform your equation, differential equation. Okay, let me ask like your differential equation is not easy to solve in this world. But like by the Laplace transform, you're gonna send your equation to the other dimension world. It's like, you know, Spider-Man universe, okay? And send it to that world. And in that world, it is easy to solve that problem. Then we will find, it, find the answer in that universe and move it back to your world, okay? So like moving from this world to the other dimension, it is Laplace transform. And moving back from that universe to this world is inverse Laplace transform, okay? We're gonna talk about Laplace transform in this section, and we will talk about inverse Laplace transform in 6.2, okay? So here we go, let's start from here, okay? Basically, let me show you the definition of Laplace transform first. It is there, one second, almost, there we go. This is the definition of Laplace transform, okay? Look at that. In the definition, there's integral from zero to infinity. Do you remember the name of this one? It is um, improper integral, right? I'm talking about calculus two stuff, okay? So I believe you forgot everything. That's why I'm gonna go over this one again, okay? Here we go, let me come back to the first. There we go. We're gonna start from improper integral, okay? So in, improper integral, which means like one side of the integral is infinite. Then as you remember, it is defined by this way, just like you make infinite as a, then send a to infinite, okay? This is the way to take care of the improper integral, okay? So let me give you a couple of um, examples, okay? So well, like, you know, for this chapter, and we are interested, about, interested in the converse case, okay? If it's just like diverse, we don't care about that, okay? So anyway, so let's keep doing this, okay? By the definition of um, uh, improper integral, it is equal to integral zero to a e to the ct, dt and we're gonna send your a to infinite. This is the definition of improper integral, right? Then, okay, let me take care of the integral part, okay? It is equal to limit a goes to zero, and now infinite, and what is anti-derivative of e to the ct? It is um, one over c, e to the ct n, we're gonna use this notation, right? Does it make sense? Then equal to, let me write the coefficient first because like your limit is working for a and what we see which is coefficient can be written in front of limit, okay? Infinite and plug in a first, which is e to the ac minus e to zero, which is one. Is that okay so far? So here, like there are two case. case it is really dependent on case, okay? First of all, this value can converse if your c is negative. What does that mean? C negative means your exponent of exponential function is negative, which means whenever a is increasing, this will be e to the minus infinite, which is equal to zero. Since this part is equal to zero, your uh, like integ improper integral value is negative one over c. I'm talking about one over c times negative one. Does it make sense? But if your c is bigger than zero, then in other words, your exponent is plus infinite e to the infinite is infinite, infinite minus one is also infinite. So this is diverse, okay? Does it make sense? And, but we didn't care one another case, which is the case c equal to zero, right? If your c equals zero, then your improper integral will be um, zero to a, since your c is equal to zero and this part equal to one, right? which is equal to um, limit a goes to infinite a 
minus zero, which is infinite. So I can I can conclude like this way: integral zero to infinite e to the c t d t is equal to two case. It can be converted to minus one over c if your c is less than zero, and it will be invert uh, infinite when c is greater than or equal to zero. Does it make sense? 